Hi, this is Margaret Floyd Barry with Eat Naked Kitchen. I'm a functional nutritionist and I specialize in helping people with gut issues, autoimmune issues, and hormonal imbalances. So today I want to talk to you about a gut infection that I am seeing a ton of in my practice right now. It's called Helicobacter pylori or H. pylori for short. And so what I'm going to do in this video is tell you a little bit about what it is, some of the symptoms, some of the things that it can lead to, and then how do you know if you have it and what do you do if you do? So let's start off with what it is. So H. pylori is a bacteria that lives in the stomach and most of us have it in some amounts, but in some people it overgrows. And when it overgrows, what it does is it attacks the parietal cells of the stomach. And those are the cells that secrete stomach acid, which is vitally important for so many different digestive functions. Um, stomach acid or hydrochloric acid, as it's technically known, is required for proper protein digestion, to be able to absorb and use your B vitamins, your minerals. It protects you against any kind of orally ingested pathogens like parasites. Uh, and it's responsible for, of course, lowering the pH of your stomach contents, which then triggers all sorts of other really, really important processes further south down the digestive tract, things like uh, secreting enzymes, stimulating your gallbladder to secrete bile, all of these really important things. So stomach acidity is a vitally important component and aspect of your digestive function. And what H. pylori does is it damages the cells that secrete that stomach acid. And it does this because it proliferates in an environment that is much more basic, so much less acidic. So it's basically creating this like nice cozy little home for itself. Now, what are some of the symptoms of H. pylori? Well, um, sometimes you don't even know that you have it. It can be silent. Um, but for some people, it will manifest as heartburn. It can be an underlying cause of chronic heartburn or GERD or acid reflux. Um, it can lead to a lot of kind of belching after meals. It can lead to a lot of those things we associate with a low acid state or hypochlorhydria, so things like a loss of taste for meat, not having an appetite first thing in the morning, feeling like when you eat a meal, especially a meal that contains protein, um, it just sort of sits in your stomach and doesn't feel like things move through very quickly. Um, it can be responsible for that like <clears throat> kind of constant throat clearing that some people have. And um, the reasons for that is because, of course, what it's doing is it's suppressing the production of stomach acidity. So all of these are also the symptoms that we see when someone has hypochlorhydria or low stomach acid. So the thing about H. pylori is that because it's damaging these cells and leading to low stomach acidity, um, and because it's this infection, some of our usual strategies to boost stomach acidity and help with digestion don't work. For one, if you take some hydrochloric acid supplementation and find that even at a really, really low dose, it really kind of lights up some symptoms, that's one sign that it could be H. pylori. Um, and, and we need to go a little bit further than just supplementing with hydrochloric acid in order to rectify the situation. We've got to actually address and eradicate that H. pylori. Now this is, this is a big deal because if it's left unresolved for a long time, it can evolve into much more serious things. So it's one of the leading causes of stomach ulcers. And if it gets quite severe, it actually can, uh, it can turn into stomach cancer. So, so I'm not saying that if you've got H. pylori, you're gonna get stomach cancer at all, but that is, if it's not addressed in the long term, that's one of the places that it can go. So how do you know if you have it? Well, these symptoms are kind of your first clue, but you do actually need to do some further testing. And H. pylori is a little finicky to test for, um, and not a lot of tests are really kind of gold standard. So one of the best ways to test for it is to do a breath test. Um, and this is something that um, your doctor would do with you. Um, we get a lot of still false negatives on this. We don't get false positives, but we do get false negatives. Um, other ways of looking for it would be um, some stool tests look for this. And again, um, we can get false negatives. If you think about the fact that, you know, this is a bacteria that lives in the stomach, in order for it to appear in the stool, it has to travel all the way through the small bowel and the large intestine in order to actually make it into a stool test. Um, 
There's also some serum testing for it. That's not, um, that's also not sort of the best way to do it. We typically will either work with the breath testing or with stool testing. So what do you do if you do have it? Well, the conventional medical model is your doctor will prescribe a combination of antibiotics to kill off the bacteria and often a PPI or a proton pump inhibitor, which is really, it's actually further suppressing the stomach's output of acidity. And they're doing this to really help mitigate symptoms. Typically they'll do this with people who are experiencing some of those kind of upper gastric um, symptoms like acid reflux, GERD, that type of thing. But basically they're trying to help you feel better and then kill off the, um, the H. pylori itself. A natural approach, not using antibiotics or medications, um, is to still eradicate the H. pylori, that's a fundamental piece of this, using a combination of different natural agents. Um, now, either of these approaches, you know, they have their benefits, they have their downsides. You know, the, the medical approach is gonna be a lot shorter, um, and the natural approach doesn't have the downsides of antibiotics, but um, it's a much longer approach. So, um, so you need to kind of balance those out. Either way, whichever approach is right for you, which is something you'd wanna discuss with your provider, whichever approach is right for you, you don't want to just focus on eradication. You also wanna think about other aspects of things. You wanna think first and foremost about what created the opportunity for this H. pylori to proliferate to begin with. Now, often what that is, is low hydrochloric acid to begin with, because remember, H. pylori thrives in a low acid environment. So what are some of the things that cause low acidity in the stomach? Well, stress, uh, a vegetarian or vegan diet, so a low protein diet, because hydrochloric acid uh, secretion is stimulated by the ingestion of protein. So if you've not been eating a lot of protein, in particular animal protein, then your stomach will naturally downregulate its production. Uh, eating sugar, alcohol consumption, high carb diets, um, aging, and then you know H. pylori. It's kind of a chicken and egg situation there. But we can see a lot of these things are very, very common. I mean, just stress, sugar consumption, alcohol consumption, and aging, a lot of these things are things that are pretty common for just about everybody out there. And um, you know, I, I shared at the beginning of this that I'm seeing a huge increase um, in H. pylori infections in my practice, in particular since COVID started. And so this is not scientifically validated at all, but I do have a theory uh, that I'm wondering about the stress levels people are under, um, which is then suppressing that stomach acidity and giving the H. pylori an opportunity to thrive. So when we're thinking about what do we do to get rid of it, yes, we wanna get rid of it, but we also want to create an environment that is very unfavorable for it to come back. Because that's one of the things about H. pylori is it has a really high recurrence rate, meaning you can get rid of it, you can do a retest, it's gone. And then if you haven't done this additional work of creating an environment that is unfavorable for it to return, then likely it will just come back. Right? So we have to address that underlying cause of low stomach acidity to begin with. Now this is a delicate process and I strongly encourage you not to be doing this alone. You wanna be doing this hand in hand with a practitioner who's really well seasoned um, and really understands how to do this because often there's a combination of using some upper gastric healing agents, very slowly and carefully titrating up your dose of hydrochloric acid. Um, the timing of this is really important. And I wish I could give you general guidelines here but it is very different from individual to individual based on your specific clinical presentation. So I'm not gonna confuse things by saying do it this way and then you talk to your practitioner and they say, well, no, not for you. Um, it's gonna be very different from person to person, but this is an essential component at some point. The other essential component is to recognize, well, you've not been secreting enough hydrochloric acid for a while, right? And as I shared at the outset, that really will affect your ability to digest proteins properly. It will affect your ability to um, access the B vitamins and um, the minerals from your diet. It has all of these other sort of downstream consequences. So as part of that healing, you want to be considering those aspects of things. So when I'm working with my clients, I'm always thinking about, well, this is a breeding ground for food sensitivities. If you're not breaking down your food properly, 
it's getting into that small intestine and kind of an incomplete form or a form that is not appropriate for digestion, your body has to work that much harder. This is one of the mechanisms that creates food sensitivities. So I'm thinking about food sensitivities. I'm thinking about other aspects of your digestive function that are really intimately connected to that hydrochloric acid. Like it's part of what triggers your body or your pancreas in particular to secrete enzymes. So how is your pancreatic enzyme secretion? Do we need to support that? It's part of what triggers your gallbladder to contract and squirt bile, which is responsible for uh, digesting fats and inspiring peristalsis, which is the muscular contraction of your intestines and kind of keeps everything moving, um, as well as other things. So I'm thinking about this a bigger picture. What are the implications of the fact that you have had low stomach acid output likely for a while? Um, so you want to be thinking about those bigger picture pieces. So just to sum up, if you do discover that you have H. pylori, well, backing up, if you think you have H. pylori, work with a practitioner who uses proper functional testing to determine if in fact you do have an overgrowth. Then if you do have H. pylori, you want to work with that practitioner to eradicate it, to create an environment in your stomach that is very unfavorable for it to come back which means basically supporting proper the stomach secretion of hydrochloric acid. You wanna think about other downstream impacts, food sensitivities in particular. Um, you wanna think about other functional implications of, of that low stomach acid. You wanna think about any kind of inflammation or irritation that this has caused. Certainly we're thinking about that upper GI because that's where the symptoms are often felt. But if food is not getting properly digested, that's gonna impact the small and large bowel. So you wanna be thinking about kind of healing um, and rebalancing those environments as well. So it's a comprehensive picture. It's very resolvable. Sometimes it takes a little bit of, of fiddling with your practitioner, um, but it's absolutely something that you can work through and help your body prevent it from coming back and certainly from it leading to one of these more serious consequences. So this is the kind of work that I do with my clients, um, but also you want to look for some trained practitioners. Um, my business partner and colleague Ann Fisher Silva and I have trained a whole roster of practitioners in these exact tools and we'll include a link to finding a practitioner near you right below this video. So thank you so much. Margaret Floyd Berry here from Eat Naked Kitchen and have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.